All right, I'm going to show you how um, we can use analysis to quickly graph functions um, without having to plot a whole bunch of points. And uh, if we get really good at this, you can get efficient. Now, I'm going to show you um, four transformations just for uh, parabolas, just for uh, x squared. But everything I'm showing you will apply to all the other functions that we're studying. So, again, um, we see y equals 2x squared, and um, our objective is to find a good graph of that and figure out what's going on with the two. So, to start with, we look at ordinary um, parabolas. When we square x's, we get uh, uh, points like on the table shown. But because of the two, we're going to have a vertical stretch. And um, as to figure out why, we just look at a new table. This time, we'll look at what the two does. So, we're going to take all the original y values that we used to have, and we're going to double each and every one. So what effect does that have on the graph? Um, well, we're going to go over 1, up 2 to get our first point from the origin instead of over 1, up 1. And we get another one on the other side for symmetry, and we create a parabola, we label our points. So that's a vertical stretch. And what happens when we get an equation like this one? Some people will get intimidated because there's so much math going on. However, we can patiently analyze. We can see there's a same vertical stretch that we had before, Plus, there's a shift to the right of 4 and a shift up 1. So, in order to make this graph efficiently, we could start by repositioning. So, instead of starting at the origin, we're going to move over 4 and up 1. And now we're going to impose our vertical stretch over that. So, we get over 1, up 2, and back 1, up 2. And we draw the parabola, label a few points, especially the ones that we use to get the graph. And... Compare it, it's the exact same vertical stretch we saw before, except this time it's shifted to the right four and up one. So to check, we just uh, put in one of our points. I chose 3, 3. Verify that the y value be 3 when the x is 3, and indeed it is. Of course, you also have um, a Desmos to verify this too. So I put the equation into the calculator. As you can see, there's the equation, and um, we can verify that all those points are the points that uh, we found in our work before. So, what happens when we have negative numbers, and even more dangerous, what happens when we have fractions? Well, um, we can analyze what the negative does and the one-half does at the same time. Um, we learned in class that this is probably a vertical reflection over the x-axis, and this is a vertical compression, and the question is why? Once again, we look at the original y equals x squared values. This time, we're going to explore what the negative one-half does. We're going to take all of the original y values and multiply each of them by negative one-half which has the effect of making all the positive numbers negative and half the size. So when plotting those points, I normally would go um, over 1, up 1, but I'm going to take this y equals 1 here, multiply it by a negative 1 half, which moves it right down here. And the same thing can be said for the other points on the parabola, which gives you a vertically compressed and reflected parabola. Label a few points. Check to see if one of those points is indeed a solution to my equation. And it is. Um, well, it looks like I'm pointing at 1, negative 1 half, but I'm pointing at 2, negative 2, which is, again, a point on my graph. Um, and again, now we see this. It looks complicated. It's got a negative, a fraction, all that other stuff going on. But we patiently analyze. We see the vertical reflection and compression, just like before, except this time we're going to shift left 2 and up 4. So we start by moving from the origin to our new location, left 2 and up 4. And we make the new fake origin there, if you will, and put a few points down. Just like we did on the previous work, we just went um, over 1, and instead of going up 1, we went down a half, and then over 2, up 4 became over 2, down 2. So create the same parabola we did in the last slide and label a few points and verify that one point is a solution. This time I did something different. I chose x equals 2, which is not one of my key points, but I just wanted to see what would happen, how accurate is my graph. And I found the point 2, negative 4 is on my graph if I extended it just a little more. And, of course, I also have Desmos. Um, just a little side note here. In my equation, I see uh, plus 4 right there, and when we did linear functions, that was always, the number outside, that was always the y-intercept. But I notice here my y-intercept is 0, 2. 
So it turns out that 4 isn't always going to be, or whatever number is dangling out there, it's not always going to be the y-intercept. That's just a bonus note for you for free. Um, enjoy your day, and we'll see you soon.